We're, we're the Hyper Gingers. Gingers! We don't know what the fuck we're doing. Oh, but we do it anyways. Okay, this is me, and that's him. Yeah, it's the Sega Man and Racer Planet ZX1. I don't actually give my, my, he just goes by his separate name, I just don't because I'm too lazy. But yeah, we are, as <coughs> course, for you. If, if you are one of those very few people who've been watching us, we're, we are the Hyper Gingers. Yep. He's the one who's probably more insane. I could be wrong though. Maybe I'm more insane. Maybe I should. Maybe I should uh, be locked up. Okay. But yeah. In this. Uh, s and by the way, here's the fruits that I'm a ginger. Uh, <laughs> I might have not seen my sweater. Anyways. Uh, here, in this. So in this separate video, we're gonna be talking about memories that we had with the con with the cons with the console back in the day. And the console wars. Yeah, console wars. <laughs> uh. Anyway. But one thing that I remember most is that when I was born, the first con like the first console I can remember ever gracing my hands on and getting to play was a Super Nintendo. And what about you? Well, I had a well. See, we our neighborhood was weird because we had some, but uh, I'll explain in a minute when it comes to consoles. I mean, but uh, I started with an entire entertainment system. My uncle Brian had bought it for us one year, and that was the year I was born. Uh, in 94, and I guess he bought us an NES, which had Super Mario Brothers 3, Duck Hunt, Kid Icarus, and the Super Mario Brothers, or sorry, Duck Hunt, Super Mario Brothers, Kurt, Super Mario Brothers 3, Kid Icarus, and Top Gun. I uh, set up, but... So, growing up, you can, you never got a Super Nintendo. No. Shit. I was, I was in the 8-bit generation growing up, even though it was the 90s. I know that I had a Nintendo at one point, the original Nintendo at one point, but I don't think it was when I was born. I... Uh, I could be wrong though, but yeah, the first console that before I had a PlayStation One, the first console that I had was a Super Nintendo, and I, I played it a lot back then, and I loved it. And it was really a shame though, because I was born in the beginning of 1995, and that was it was around that point where the Super Nintendo was kind of fading away alongside the Sega Genesis as they were entering the new generation, which has he said Nintendo 64, Sega, Sega Saturn, and then I had the Sony PlayStation. Yeah. But, you got um, a Sony fanboy over here. <laughs> uh, it's Maybe not that I'm it. a fan. It's not that I'm a fanboy. I just like the PlayStation I know, lineup. I know. I peck on them all the time. Though. Yeah, you you do all right. Hey, but hey, I'm not. I I don't do the same with you with the Sega console. So why you do? Oh fuck it. <laughs> Anyways, uh. So yeah, the Super Nintendo, I guess to me, kind of really means a lot to me as a kid because yeah. it was the very first console I ever graced upon. And in terms of games, I don't really know any other console to this day that really has such a high caliber amount of games that really just kind of broke new grounds. I know some other consoles have some of their games, but Super Nintendo really got, they really hit the nail hard with it. They got, they threw it out, they hit it out of the park and... To this date, it just owning one is fantastic. And, and I will say one thing about that. Although I am totally in the Sega Genesis, and it's my favorite console, at least 16-bit by far, I will admit, as a Sega fanboy, <laughs> um, I do own a Super Nintendo that's back there running right now. And Although it was not the most popular at the time, it really was groundbreaking. At it the has time? Some awesome games. Wait, wait, wait. At the time? Okay, it's still groundbreaking. At the, the Super Nintendo at, at the time in the 90s was the most popular, so you screwed that up. No, it, Sega was in the early 90s. Sega Genesis on the market during that time. Yeah, but I think it, the Super Nintendo, when it was really it, out... S S Super Nintendo came back when Sega fucked up with sort of the Sega CD, but especially the 32X. I always, no, I always, I always thought short a couple years after the Super Nintendo came out, it took over, but I could be wrong, but... Anyways. It's 1993. Damn. Yeah, but so anyway, but yeah. It's basically just, it had so many games for it. The Super Nintendo always had like, so many games for it that really just kind of set it off on it, on it as its own. And really, in, in the end, even if, if you like Super Nintendo or Sega Genesis, you can't, like if you like Su Genesis more than Super Nintendo, you still can't deny that Super Nintendo really, really was a console that just was just was true to gaming. Just, it, it was it, during a generation yeah. where gaming was not all about media and all this uh, online stuff. It was just about play, It was just about yeah. get renting, it, renting or buying a game, playing through it on these, playing through it on these kind of cartridges. Is 
and enjoying yourself with with the quality that they with the <coughs> quality that they had, which because back in the day quality was probably more important than it is now. It, it was, yeah. But even back then, they had some online services, and even though they weren't that popular, it, people. I had don't. Mean, it. I don't mean that kind of online. I I mean like Xbox Live and PlayStation Network. Oh, I know, I know. I'm just saying, like back then, there were some online services. I don't know if you ever heard of. Uh, keep forgetting the name of it, but you put it. Xcom. X. Xcom. X. X Link or something. I don't know. The point is. I, I thought it was Xcom, but. Yeah. I don't think the I, it's X something, but anyways, you put it on top of your there was a Genesis version, and Simmertown put version. You put it on top. I think you put it in first, and then you play either Mortal Kombat, for example, Mario Kart or Street Fighter or something like that on top of it. And what would happen is it'd be hooked up through dial-up, and you'd dial up the services, and it would connect you to another player in a nearby state or whatever. I think it was only American, I'm not too sure. Not but, sure, but... People still enjoyed having friends over to play. Yeah, so. mul multiplayer back then, it wasn't about just getting up, connecting your console to, like, the internet, getting up a server, and then just meeting all these people you don't really know. It, but multiplayer back then, it was about getting, it was about getting up with your friends, Getting another controller, and then the, the two of you just enjoy it together. And when you get mad at each other, you can whack each other in the head with the controllers. I bet you that's. I bet you people have done that. Yeah, we did. But that. anyways, I think we should stop talking about our like that <laughs> stuff. I think we should get into what like what, what the games and what and the other stuff and what made it like what were the, the spotlight games. Spotlight games. Well, we got a few spotlight games here and a few. Uh, when I mean spotlight games, I mean the ones that people actually. That are considered to be some of the greater games for the console. Yeah. Not like, not like some of these we have. And the first one we got, which I'm gonna show you. Well, actually, before we do that, we should talk about what's behind us. And I know you can't see it too well because the webcam is making like too bright. But so you got Super Mario World here in the background, and it's it's kind of usually considered the definitive Super Nintendo game because it. I think it came bundled with a lot of Super Nintendo. It did. It was like uh, Sonic on Genesis. Thing. Yeah, it was all bundled stuff. Yeah, and it, 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 most people, people who who played uh, Super Nintendo, they know exactly about what Super Mario World is. And at the time, it kind of it kind of really broke down because it took the Super Mario Brothers format that works really well. Yeah. And expanded on it to make something really revolutionary. It was like a whole, and in a way, it was like a whole different Mario, but with that same Mario. I I know that doesn't make sense, but and I, then of I course, played. And I then it introduced. The thing, you know, I beat the game, and the whole game, it's just like non-stop kick ass. You can't go wrong with non-stop kick ass. I mean, when do you see that today? It's very rare. Look at this groundbreaking. I can barely see it because the light. I don't care. They know what we're talking about. Okay, yeah, okay. but anyways, but really, it's really just, in the end, when you think about it, Super Mario World, they really did a <coughs> lot of, it was, it, it's just a game that, through time, never seems to age, never seems to age poorly. It's a game that, uh, you can, you can look back and say, man, those were some, man, growing up and having played Super Mario World, that was a kick-ass childhood. If, of course, you were a child during the Super Nintendo days. Yeah, but some kids, man, now they had good shit. Let's go play Call of Duty. Uh, yeah, people always talking about Call of Duty. I was like, we had, we had me snap my head. See, but yeah, well, we, 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 well, I mean, Super Mario World had, like, the, uh, plat the, 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 suit, the special kind of platforms, the kitchen kind of Koopas. It introduced Yoshi. Yeah, yeah all this. introduced a lot of things that were used later because it was just so good. Yeah, and... Yoshi was so popular, they made Super Mario World 2. They Yoshi. made Yoshi, they made spin-off games that were based on Yoshi, like, uh, um, uh, they, something as simple as Yoshi's Cookie, or they got the high-end ones, like, what was the game, Yoshi's... Super something. Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island. Yeah, what about the Tusk 4, what was that Super Yoshi? Yoshi Story? Yeah, Yoshi Story, I played but yeah, that, but yeah, it. It, why were, it was we're, good. We're talking about Super Nintendo right now. I know, we're just, we are... But yeah, Super Mario World, when it, it, Yoshi was so popular, they had Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island, and my god, uh, that, Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island, everyone, and I mean everyone should play that on their Super Nintendo, that game was so, was so amazing. It was so amazing that it was so powerful that it required an FX chip. 
Okay, sure. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so it was so different from the first Super Mario World, but they managed to make something that was completely different and not a, not expected to be really good, and it was just amazing. There was just nothing like it. Anyways, I, let's get into these other games that we have here. Yeah. Well, I got a game here that I've been playing a lot. I pl I have the original Show it up to the well. web game. Yeah, this is. You guess? No, no, no. Gradius three. Gradius three. Uh, okay, and uh, yeah, that'll see it. Well, Gradius three. Don't mind the uh, twenty dollars sticker. That's weird. Yeah. But yeah. I've never honestly played a lot of these games, but I played Gradius three once uh, a couple years ago on an emulator. And I must say, for a space shooter, it, it was really, it was really something interesting. Yeah, Gradius three. It's a really good schmuck for the Super Nintendo. I mean, it's just. It's addictive. You get pissed off because you want to beat it and keep dying, but you keep playing because it's so good. Yeah, it's you like shit all over the screen and you're shooting at it. It's, and it's well, basically power it's basically one of non -stop. those games that are is meant to <laughs> it's meant to be extremely challenging and meant to frustrate the gamer. Yet it has that addictive feel that you just want to keep coming back for more. Oh. And, and and again, this was during a time where you couldn't if you yes, this was more during a time where internet wasn't really much. So if you really wanted to know what it was what happened later in the game. You had to beat it. You couldn't just look up online and, and say, oh, here's a playthrough. Yeah, and if you wanted cheats, you'd have to ask a friend who may have known someone or does have, like, an order Nintendo Power or bought a cheat book yeah. or something. Yeah, if they had Nintendo yeah. Power or they had a cheat, one of those cheat magazines yeah. back in the day, then and that's, all that's, all that's all you would have known. That's all you That's all they had. Like, I got lucky, like... I, I bought this game used, it's got cheats on the tape to the yeah, back somewhat, of it. Like, seems like, <laughs> it's got Konami code and stuff. Like, for some reason, you, some, the, the previous person who owned this, they put, like, codes on it. It's good, though. I didn't, have, funny. I didn't have to look it up. And it's got, <laughs> and it's got the uh, it's got the Konami code, because, of course, this is a Konami-made game. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's really funny that they did that, but anyways. Anyways, what else do we got? Well, we got a few. This one I'd like to mention because although not many people know what it is, it's actually uh, underrated. Super Baseball 2020. Yeah, seems like a really whacked out name, but it, for a baseball game, it's actually fun to play. I'm not into sports games. I don't I don't play sports games. I just collect them. But that game, I enjoy playing. So if you're not into sports, you should try it out. Like it, I only paid a dollar ninety nine for it. Yeah, dollar ninety nine. Like for two bucks. What the hell? Why not? You know, so if you see it, pick it up. Why not? Yeah. Cheat. It's uh, fun. Okay. It's unique. But yeah, I never played it, but I'll have to take your word for it. Yeah. Okay. This one I. Blockbuster. <laughs> this one I remember. Not well, but I remember. Uh, this is. I. I think some people may know th this wow. character. There you go. Cubert. Cubert. I was gonna put it down. I was just putting. Put. That's the. That's the. That's the treacle yeah, like, I've not. I can't remember a lot about Cubert. I think it was that one where you're on the platforms I, and you're yeah. just trying to get like a certain colors. I don't know. I, I have played it. I can tell you. I did take some time to play it. Um, it seems a little off. Oh, it's Cubert three actually. Yeah, Cubert three. It seems a little off from the original, but it's still a lot of fun. Does you he, can find it. Is it that? Does he do the same thing where when he dies, he has all that that text thing? Texting, I think so. I can't yeah. remember. I've in, played the it a bit, but... in the original Cube, if he died, it would, it, would, it would be a speech bubble on all these characters, like it was swearing or something. Oh, oh yeah, he did that. He did that. He does that. Yeah, but uh, it's basically kind of like the original, but it's a lot more challenging. It's 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 a lot of fun still. So if, again, pick it up if you see it because Cube. Uh, I don't know. It's we, good. We, I guess we could get this one out of the way. Uh... Yeah, Suzuka. 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 Eight hours. Suzuka. Eight hours. It's a motorbike game. Okay. I like racing games a lot. Racing games are some are like you my favorite that one. My favorite genre, but I don't really care about motorcycle games much, except for MotoGP. Now, interesting thing about that game, it does use Mode Seven. Just for your knowledge. It's actually it's made by Namco. Yeah, and it's actually kind of fun. But the funny thing about the game, it's there's some the controls are a little off. But it's still a good game. Um, the one thing funny about it, you, if you want to, there's a setting where you can actually play eight hours. Oh shit! We can actually, don't want to lose that. Yeah. Sorry about that. You can actually play on a track for eight hours. Race on the track for eight hours. There's a setting, and it runs in real time. That's that's pretty cool. <laughs> so if you want to do it back real, in the day, that yeah. had to be something amazing. Yeah. They're like, oh my god, we can do it for real. You no. Know? And then the, and now it's just like, oh, oh, they have that. Okay, cool. 
It's gonna be okay, three. This is an I this is like another uh Super Strike Eagle aerial yeah. shooter game. Don't actually say it until I bring it up to the webcam. Oh, I'm sorry, I ruined the moment. Yeah, it's okay. Super Strike Eagle. I don't know what it really is. I'll explain. Okay, Super. These are my games. That's what I know, but yeah, Super. I don't know yeah, Super Strike Eagle. It's a mixture of Mode Seven and uh, First Person uh, Through the Cockpit. So it's kind of like a. It's an aircraft simulation and at the same time an arcade simulation. In my opinion, it's actually a lot of fun. And it's, it's fun to go through the missions. It, it is a simulation, though, so if you're into more action, not simulation, eh, Excuse me. Try, it, try it out on an emulator first. If you like it, though, pick it up, because it is a really good game to have in your collection. It's a lot of fun. Um, uh, long passwords if you want to continue, but it's a lot of fun. Okay. Uh, this next one, I, uh, it's another racing game, it's a Formula 1, it's Nigel Mansell's, Formula 1, yeah. Nigel Mansell's World Championship. Now, those of you who don't know who Nigel Mansell is, he was, a uh, he's considered to be one of the greater Formula 1 drivers of all time, alongside guys like Ayrton Senna and Alain, Alain Prost, but, yeah. Nigel Mansell, he was pretty popular back in the day. This was actually made in 1993, I believe that was... The year just before he retired. Hmm. And I didn't know that. I, I could be wrong, but who knows? And uh, but so yeah, he was quite popular. He was quite popular for the time. But I again, I've never played this, and I'll, I'll and I can't say much because I honestly haven't took the time to play it much. So maybe. Oh, thank God that was a cart. Maybe that was maybe that was my uh, uh unintended uh re response to what I think about it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Intended. Fuck, I'm really starving now. Uh, I'll make Steel City Video brings us Mad in 94. There you go, Chris. Eat that. You'll be full. I do not care about Madden games. I don't know why they, they EA can insist that they still make it, but I don't know. I guess people still buy them. I don't care about them, so I can't say much about this. Yeah, but for sports fans, here you go. That's what it looks like. Okay, we're, we're saving. That's about it. We're saving two of the better ones for last. Uh, All right. Okay. The last two games are okay. so great. You're gonna be prepared, ready, and excited, and all that good stuff. Okay, the first one here. I don't think we could properly play because we. I need... don't have a mouse. Yes, yeah, so we need you. This was a game. Guess what is now? This was a game that required the Super NES mouse. Yeah. And it was quite. Interesting for its time, but a lot of people really liked it. It's Mario Mario Paint, Paint. and you know what sucks? I you know I, I got this at Value Village for two bucks, but every time I go to the store, they have a mouse there, and I can't buy the mouse separately. It's always bundled with this game. It's like it can be cost twenty four dollars depending on the condition of the mouse or whatever. Yeah, or if it comes with the pad. So. But yeah, the mouse. The, but if you had it, Mario Paint was an interesting game. I mean. It was, yeah. it was supposed to be just painting and, and having and, fun, and, but a lot of people thought that was for th thought and, that to have that was quite interesting. Yeah. And you know, you could actually do a lot with it. If any of you have ever heard of uh, Homestar Runner, uh, it's a it's a little animation show on a website. Um, the first Home Homestar Runner animation was actually made on Mario Paint. Believe it or not, that's how that's how much you can do with it. So. Um, you can make music. You yeah, can because do you had the uh, you can make because you had the Mario. You had yeah, the, you had that music editor thing. I forget its name now. Yeah, but uh, and the, it, the music thing was so popular that they yeah. ha they made a PC version with it where you uh, could uh, where yeah. you could make it extremely long. You can save as many as you want, just like you know. Yeah, and then there was and then they also had that one mini game where you swat in the flies or the mosquitoes or whatever. Oh, yeah, I remember. that was quite interesting. Okay, and uh, this last one, we personally, ha I personally wanted to say it for last because this game, uh, I'm not a fight, I'm not a fighting game fan, but if anything, this is probably a fighting game I would play, and it's a sequel to one, it's a sequel to a fantastic game. And I bought it because I didn't have the other two others I could find for Genesis. Yeah, or I and, have the other two. And I believe yeah. this is the one that actually had blood in it. Mortal, Mortal Kombat, Kombat 2. 2. Yes, the first one didn't have blood. Yeah, because the Super Nintendo back in the day was pretty crazy about censorship. Yeah, and I will mention something about Mortal Kombat. They made it like they made yeah. like fucking sweat in that game. It was fucking disgusting. <laughs> like seriously. I'll talk about the games just real quick because I just got my head right now. The first Mortal Kombat was better on the Super Nintendo, other for the blood though. 
because in the Sega Genesis version, the six button controller didn't exist and you only had three buttons to work with and it really sucked. I, I have the game, it's not, it, the controls are just bad. Super Nintendo, they're much better. The later ones, those six button controllers are good, but the Super Nintendo one is also, uh, I don't know, I like them both, I can't really, I don't know, look up a comparison video, honestly, more Kombat 2 and 3 good on both consoles, it's the first one you want to mainly look at and you can buy it whether it's Burn Genesis or Super Nintendo. So yeah, there are the games and Super Mario World as well. So which I guess we'll call I, out. I think I don't think we did the problem I think we have here is that with the game with the games that we have on our hands right now, yeah. I don't think we're making we're not making really good justice with the uh, the Super Nintendo yeah. because there were so many more great games and we don't have we may not have them but if but, any, you know what? Our memories are there, and we'd like to share them with you, and here we yeah, are. Yeah, so... Okay, so... Uh, super... Okay, so... Other other great Mario games included Super Mario Kart. Yeah, I played that in the day my... My, um... Mom's friend had the... Pe the, the, the Parkinson's, right? Uh, I went over there, we played Mario Kart all the time, the original. It was so much fun. Yeah, I mean, it, w it was something... It was really interesting... I mean, just kart racers back then, they were, there wasn't really, they didn't really exist. Super Mario Kart is usually considered to be like maybe the grandfather of them. And in terms of sheer fun and replay value, Super Mario Kart hit it right out of the park. It was, and you could tell, and it was designed to be multiplayer wise, and it did it very well. Super Mario Kart was just, and then what followed Super Mario Kart to me, uh, as another fantastic racer, uh, it was the Top Gear franchise, the Top Gear trilogy. Yeah. yeah. Not not related to the uh, BBC television, BBC motoring show. Yeah. Uh, Top Gear, Top Gear Two, and Top Gear Three Thousand. Now 3, tell 000. me about that because I haven't played those at all. The, first, uh, the originals. Top Gear, the first one, it was basically, it was basically like a cross. It was kind of, you could say it was kind of like a cross-country circuit racing game, yeah. where you drive, where you get to choose between like four really net, four really nice uh, sporty cars, or and, and essentially, uh, you tell us about it. And essentially, uh, as you you're basically racing in, you're racing against like 20 cars, which for the time is really good. Yeah, I think like, it, I think crap. it's I think it's 20 cars, yeah, and. It, there was it had a lot of interesting features such as like pit stopping and all this other nonsense. And then there was Top Gear 2, which uh, we don't own a Super Nintendo copy of. Oh, but we have the Genesis version. Yeah. And this is what it looks like. I freaking love that. That's pretty I cool. I think the Super I think the Super Nintendo Top Gear was some similar to that though. I think it was a lot better though because on the Genesis version you're limited in a way. Um, the graphics seem a little limited compared to Super Town version, I think. And the thing I don't like about it, you can you can either have music or sound effects. You can't have both. That is pretty stupid. Yeah. I I personally think that is ridiculous, but whatever. I don't know. The Genesis was not as powerful as yeah. Super Nintendo. Yeah. That's that's true. Uh, it still doesn't make sense why you couldn't have both sounds going on. obviously I mean, especially since, obviously the music, especially since almost every other game could do it unless yeah unless they ran out of sound uh, uh okay so know. okay and then well, well let's kind of focus away from racers and let's focus on some like other games yeah what other games do we have uh, I've, knows more than me, so. I've never played The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. I've never played it for my life, and I, and as well as Super Metroid. And both of those, I'm regretting very badly. I really need to play those as soon as I can, because I've seen videos of those games, and they just look absolutely spectacular. They look like some of the best of their, uh, of their franchise. I could be, I might even be one to say that I played, uh, I played Ocarina of Time, and that's a fantastic, but yeah. it, I, it looks like the, A Link to the Past could potentially interest me more than Ocarina of Time, and that's saying a lot. Yeah. But, anyway, yeah, I have to, I'll have to play it, though, but, Link, I mean, for, Zelda games were always fantastic, because they're, the, they were the adventure game that really made you feel like you're on an adventure. <laughs> oh, and don't worry about this. This is this is where my new headphones are in. But uh, any the hell that fit in there? The, they can fold up. They're foldable. Wow. But yeah, the pretty much the the super but the, and then Super Metroid is is another brilliant game with the, uh, the 
shoot, uh, the shooting was great, the platforming was great, it was pretty much great. But I have yet to play it. <laughs> it sucks. I know. But one game I actually have played is, is and is considered to be one of the best Super Nintendo games of all time, is that? Earthbound. Oh, you bastard. Earthbound is fi- oh my bastard. god. Bastard, did you play it back in the day? Yeah, I did. God damn it. It was brilliant. Anyone who- pl anyone <laughs> should play Earthbound. Anyone, and I guarantee to you they will enjoy it. It, has, it did so many things right. It's the it, RPG for everyone. Pretty much. And speaking of RPG, there was also Super Mario RPG. Yeah! That, that was... The, it, this, the, and I think that's what led us to Paper Mario. The collaboration between Nintendo and Squaresoft. And they they nailed it right out of the park. It was so popular that I guess you, I guess you could say that uh, the Paper Mario is the spiritual successor to Super Mario yeah. RPG. The only difference on Paper Mario is it was... Uh, Done, it was done with Nintendo and Hudson Soft, not uh, Square Enix. Oh, I thought it was... No, it was actually Hudson Soft. But obviously they did a good job, because that game's good too, so... Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's brilliant, and anyone should play it. And, uh, and oh, oh, by the way, you might want to... You'll have to be careful trying to play that game, because most uh, most of those clone consoles, like the uh, F's, the... Uh, uh, the what's the FC one? Twin? The FC Twin and, and everything. The FC something and there's others. Out yeah, there, they they won't they uh, most the of them won't, most of them won't play it. Yeah. However, the uh, I know that the handheld the handheld the the Superboy and the Retro Dual Portable they'll they'll play it. Yeah, and that's really cool because a lot of people people just won't play it. And yeah, what else was there? Oh, Mega Man X. The uh, Mega Man X games. My okay. God. If anyone, like, eager after his, in his videos, he always, like, in his sequel line, Mega Man X, he try to show you how awesome it is. And he ain't lying about that. It, I played it as a kid, and I loved it. <laughs> there was, like, <coughs> like, Mega Man X was a badass. Zero was, like, the ultimate badass. And... Yeah. Pretty much just going around shooting all the robots and figuring out everything without the stupid tutorial without like stupid tutorials like press this button or make sure to watch out for all that crap. Yeah, yeah. You see that's a game I need to try because believe it or not, I haven't tried it. I haven't played any of the Mega Man games. I never owned one. Are you serious? I'm dead serious. Look, you, don't do that then. It's so depressing though, I just watch it's like I wanna get like a real copy. I don't wanna try Emily first, so I wanna do it. Real deal, right here. Cards, everything. I just... Yeah, I mean that makes sense. NES, Super Nintendo. And one, oh, one more, one thing I'll also tell you is, uh, if you have, it, it, are you someone who likes playing uh, Super Famicom games and you have the Japanese imports, but you don't want to have to get a Super Famicom to play it? Simple. There's a. If if you notice on the uh, American Super Nintendo cartridge, you can notice those these. I have to. Kind of yeah, perfect. the parts of Nintendo 64. The two uh, yeah. pin things that they had. The reason why uh, uh, they did that for, like, of course, to uh, so Japanese games couldn't play. Yeah. The only thing, the only problem is, is that people could easily figure out how to get past that and manage to take them off and manage to play their Super Famicom games because they'll actually fit now. And yeah. that's and that is quite saying yeah. something. And that is quite something because Tile 64 is like that too. Eh? Really? Yeah. And there's also adapters that adapt as well, it just goes in. Yeah, and, and another thing I've always wondered is, one thing that I miss is the code enhancers devices like Game Chart. The yeah. Super Nintendo had something called the Game Genie, and that, back then, it was quite something. You could do, with these cartridge games, you were able to do a lot with them, with the code devices. You could, find, you could find new things, make all these crazy glitches. Do all these crazy things. They were amazing. And they and and then and the un but now the unfortunate thing is that those the way of online those are kind of a thing of the past now. Yeah. And, and I mean, Game Shark kind of shit there, so that comes to go. Like, Game Shark's gone. Yeah. Didn't they kind of crap themselves up on yeah. the way? Because their their products kind of broke a lot. Uh, they're the Nintendo Six. The Nintendo 64 version was the worst as well as the PlayStation. The PlayStation? No, not the PlayStation. One. PlayStation One had the same problems. Probably the early ones, but when they got to disc, they were fine. Oh, the discs were fine. I'm talking about the, uh... Okay, yeah, the, um, the, yeah, the one that the PlayStation... On the, the back, you snapped them off, yeah. But, uh, yeah. anyways, we're okay. getting off topic again, but yeah, okay. ga a game, uh, and then Genie. There, another yeah. good race series to me is F-Zero. Yes, that's a very great game. Yeah, like that, you, you're just going at high speed. <laughs> you're going at high, you're going at high speed throughout these 
crazy futuristic horses, and it was it, it, it's just quite something. And uh, and uh, not to mention the uh, I can't the, I always thought when you crashed and it made that loud noise, I was always thinking it was glitching up or something. Because that's what it sounds like. It really? sounds like a, it sounds like the audio was glitching. But yeah, I don't know. Like the night the early '90s was definitely a time to have a Super Nintendo. It, it had so many games. But a lot of people were fearing that, like, heading into the mid-90s, it was starting to die off. However, in the end of 1994, that completely changed when probably my one of my all-time favorite adventure platform games of all time was released. And that was Donkey Kong Country. <gasps> that was... is seriously one of my all-time favorite games ever. Ever. There, there, I've never played a game that had, that was, that so revolutionary for its time, so addictive, and even possibly so challenging that it man that e even to this day, playing it just puts a smile on my face. And that, I mean, it rocked the world with the first one, and it was so popular, a sequel was made, Donkey Kong Country 2, which is one of the very few examples on where a sequel, personally to me, is better than the original game. Donkey Kong Country 2, all-time greatest Super Nintendo game I've ever played. That's just me. And I think they said it pretty well in the movie too. Um, I can't remember the name of it, but uh, he the he was arguing with a kid. Said I th I think Mortal Kombat's the best game ever made. Mortal Kombat on Sega Genesis is the best video game ever. I disagree. It's a very good game, but I think Donkey Kong is the best game ever. Donkey Kong sucks. You know something? You suck. What video was it? What one was it? Uh, yeah. Donkey Kong Country. But that's it. Donkey, Donkey Kong, Kong Country. Donkey two. Kong Country. Two. Yeah. The, oh, uh, the other one sucked now. Donkey Kong Country 2 was just. It, I mean, it ditched the formula where it was. It ditched the for. It ditched the formula where it was. You had the strong. You had the really strong. On uh, Kong, and you had the really fast one. It went from being the really fast one to the to the really uh, high jumper one. It was kind of like balanced out. Yeah. And I sort of like that. And uh, I think Donkey Kong Country 2 is also the most challenging of the three. And then finally, in 1996, we had Donkey Kong Country 3, which usually to a lot of people is considered to be the weakest one, but it's still it's still a great game. It still can be a very good game. I mean. If anything, it's <laughs> all the Donkey Kong Country games are fantastic. It's just the third one just kind of felt like it kind of lacked a little bit, especially because I don't know. It just kind of felt like something was missing about it, especially when you consider it was always called Donkey Kong Country. And by this point, not only was Donkey Kong kidnapped, like in Donkey Kong Country 2, but Diddy Kong was kidnapped. Basically, the stars that made the first game were you couldn't even play them. And you you can play Dixie Kong where she's still great, but who the hell wants to really? Do you honestly really want to play as Kitty Kong? Honestly, to me, I say fuck no. But yeah, even still, it's even though it's the the the, the worst of the bunch, it's still a great game. And really, and it's all it, because it was of all it, this happened around the end of the end of the line, kind of similar to Yoshi's Island, end of the line, and really. When the Super Nintendo kind of uh, faded out, yeah, I, you could say I could say it was kind of a sad day because you know, Super Nintendo was just it it had something that's been lacking in was lacking in in consoles that came on went on and that it it was all about when the games meant at, actually meant quality and not just quickly cash into something. Of course quality, there was good, of course there was plenty of movie fun. games which are still which even then were garbage, but. Uh, what what games? Of course, there were movie games back FMB, then, uh, which were still garbage. But yeah, yeah Super Nintendo just it, it it took a simple it took it it was it was riding on the alarming success in the Nintendo and consider which is considered to be the console that saved the video game the saved video games from fading away to never seeing again, and it just made it to something where you just had to have one. The Super Nintendo really did a lot for you and I mean it's it sucks that with these days with the it sucks that these days you're gonna have kid you're gonna have all these young kids who think that the greatest games ever made are things where you can blow people were games like call were games like Call of Duty and Battlefield and Skyrim Skyrim is a good game but I don't really care much for it but 
Hmm, there seems to be a pattern going on here. Killing. Killing. Yeah, what? Exploding. what Killing. Killing. Exploding. Virtual. Exploding. What the fuck? What do you think? This- that goes- that's a great way to, to show you what- what- what this genera- these generation of kids care about. But yeah. Look it! And look it! They don't build holy shit. Here's a piece of shit right here. Just unplug it. Piece of shit. Okay, here's an Xbox. 360. I can no longer fix I fixed it for the fifth time. I don't even give a shit about it. I think we should just... Fucking break the shit. Just yeah, let's, fuck it. let's just break, break just the shit out. Sorry, this is an Xbox 360. Maybe it can be fixed, but now I just don't give a shit. It's a piece of crap. It deserves to die. We're gonna we're gonna piss off so many people by doing this, by the way. And they're gonna be like, dude, Here's an Xbox 360 drive. Here's an Xbox 360. I don't give a shit. That yeah, I mean, you you can hate us all you want for doing that, but that goes to show you that consoles back then had so much more quality and were so much. Now more hold on before anyone trolls us. Okay, just real quick, there are some good seven games. I'm not saying destroy our Xbox 360s, okay? There's some good games. But we're talking about the past here. We're talking about everything was David, just so good. David, David, David. The generation... The, even these gener... Uh, the people who will most likely see this, if if we even get a lot of... Even if we get... If we surprisingly get even, like, uh, over 100 views. Uh, uh, I think, honestly, it, what we're trying to show is that it's like most the people who will watch it they'll know what we mean it's all about, back then it was about it was about the ex, it was more about the experience and more about uh, more about the quality of how things were we're in a generation where the media social media has been taking over everything and yeah it's, literally and it's just more about and it's, it's not and about it's, being yourself it's about being like those stupid ass celebrities yeah back then it was just it, back then Companies wanted to make games that actually could keep people playing. Just give now, me, just, now all it is is oh, here's a game yeah. that you'll play for a year, and oh, here's our sequel. Go and buy it. I mean, fuck. What what's happened? All creativity. You're letting your imagination fly. It's all the yeah. I mean, here's a great example. Don't get don't get me wrong. Kinder surprise. Don't you get can't me wrong. Shit anymore. Don't get me. Um, don't <laughs> don't get me wrong. I mean. <laughs> In these current generations, they, there's still plenty of great games in these current generations, and there's still a lot of, still they're still very creative yeah. ones. But that number is is so lo much lower than it was back then. And honestly, honestly, if it if it continues to go at this rate, I fear for how how it's going. It might be as time goes on. But may, maybe maybe then yeah. we'll just maybe then we might just all forget about it. And now games are so expensive, people are turning to, uh, downloadable ones. Fuck. Like, 60 70 dollars for brand new games. I think that, well, that, back then, it was kind of, I think it was still about, like, I think was, some was, games are 30 to $40, like, when Nintendo 64 is out, this is 90s, not the 80s, okay? Nintendo 64, uh, I think a brand new game costs 35 to $45. Dollars are for you sure? Is. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure about that, I'm but, okay. I'm dead sure, I, I remember okay so but yeah i don't know just things have just gotten out of hand and it's just i don't know i just kind of i just miss how things used to be back then with the games and the super nintendo especially but well super nintendo is always going to stay in our hearts and yeah. we're still going to always play it to this day yeah it's just still like here just, with us just like how we still always play original didn't nintendo. overheat <laughs> just like just like how we still always play <laughs> Original Nintendo, Nintendo 64, PlayStation 1, Sega, right. Sega Genesis, Sega Saturn, Sega Dreamcast. I love the Dreamcast so much. But, yeah. I, th I don't want to shed a tear now, so I think you should better stop this. Yeah, so... Oh, was, and that, oh, and one more thing. There's there's a Super Nintendo. Yeah, and just for everyone here, a nearly non-yellowed Super Nintendo it looks just like all of your memories see it as. Except for the buttons, because they kind of faded a bit in color. This is what helped to change our world, my friends. <laughs> look, I'm trying. Okay? Looking... It's imagination. You gotta have it. Oh. Yeah, actually, this is, uh, I think this was one of, I, actually, this probably was one of, this probably was one of the Super Nintendos that were prone to yelling, don't you think? Uh, yeah, this is the later built one, but they still get yellowed. Oh, so it's, how do you know it's a later built one? <coughs> 
You, okay, little trick for one. You want to know if you got the smaller, newer board or the larger, bigger board. Some people need to know this for making portables. There's, you take this extension port off on the bottom, and inside there's three little pins. You can't see it. If they're nice and clean, you got the later board. If they're, it looks like a devil jag, you got the older board, and I got the newer board. That's a little trick for you guys, all right? Yeah, that's a, okay. Yeah, and what's interesting I is... I think another thing, too, I also... newer... Wait, 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 yeah, wait, yeah, wait, what's wait. up? Hang on. I remember another way, and I think I now remember... The eject button. Just by now, look, I remember looking at another way. My eject button's different. Right? In the power button, it, in the later ones, it it said, like, on and off, in the, whereas compared to the original one where it didn't. I think they're all power. No, I'm talking about the off on. I don't think oh, that yeah. needs to be there. And one more thing, guys. Another way to check. I know, I know we're just being quick here, but see this eject? Now, this is why you have to check bond because it's not always right. Um, the older ones, the older boards will have this eject button, and the newer ones won't be white. It'll be indented. Mine's different. It's a newer board with the old style, but yeah. But anyways, that's the Super Nintendo. Even though uh, the Japanese version looks a lot nicer, um... The American one still looks very, very, like, nice machine, and it's solid. It's made of Nintendo. I mean, that's solid. That's a solid chemical. You know? Yeah, anyway. But, yeah, anyways, this is Super Nintendo for you. That's some of our memories. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you got a little nostalgia going on for you there. And, uh... I hope you, I hope you actually think this was actually a good video, <laughs> not, not something that you'll probably give, like, a million dislikes over. We're not the great, we're not the smartest people in the world, but we're trying to entertain you guys. Anyways. Yep. Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. Take care. Yeah, take care. And, uh... And, uh, eat, and, uh, eat your, eat your cereals. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, eat your cereals. Oh, serious. Well, late. This has been... This has been a Hyper Ginger's production. Thank you for watching.